Hey everyone, John Eric here. Um, I'm uh, creating an instructional video to help with your landscape assignment. Um, just a reminder that these activities are optional. While you're at home, I hope that you keep up with your art skills and I'll be posting a new activity each week. So if you finish these, just hang on to them until we come back to school. And uh, keep in mind, um, you know, use what works for you in your situation. If you only have a pencil and a sheet of notebook paper, a sheet of copy, book, uh, copy paper, you should still be able to complete these assignments. But if you have things like paint, watercolor, markers, colored pencils, crayons, like I know many of you do, please feel free to add more to your work. All right. So I've got a dry erase board right here. And um, I'm going to stick to the criteria that I put in the instructions. So one of the things I asked you to include in your landscape drawing was a horizon line. So I'm going to draw a horizon line on this dry erase board, and I'm going to start with that. So a horizon line is the line that separates the earth from the sky. And when I draw my horizon line, I'm going to use an organic line. So that means it's not perfectly straight. I didn't use a ruler or a straight edge for this. I included a few curves and that's kind of the fun thing about um, adding your horizon line. You can make it the way that you want to. The other thing that I asked you to include in your landscape drawing was the three layers of space. So that's your foreground, middle ground, and background. So you can you can really convey this in a few different ways. Um, the way that I'm going to show those three layers of space are with other horizontal lines. So I'm going to add another curved organic line here. This is going to be my foreground. So this is the part of my drawing that's closest to me. Other ways that you can show the three layers of space are just by showing them with details and textures. So um, in one of the resources I gave to you um, underneath the instructions, it'll, it'll point out in a few reference images where the foreground, middle ground, and background would be. Um, but for this drawing, I'm just going to keep it really simple and include three horizontal lines. So this is my horizon line. This is my foreground line. And then for my middle ground, I'm going to add another little line here, just like that. All right, so I've got those three things. I've got my horizon line, check, my foreground, and my middle ground, but I'm missing a few things. I'm missing some details and textures. So I'm going to start with the details on my foreground, and I'm going to include one big detail. I'm going to draw a tree, and I'm going to exaggerate the size of the tree. So when I draw it, I want to create the illusion that this is closest to us in space, that this Whatever this piece of land is, is right in front of us. So if there's a tree here, it's going to be really big. It's actually going to overlap um, my middle ground and my background and a lot of the sky too. <clears throat> and if you watch the video I included in your resources, that was one way that artists can include the illusion of depth in an artwork is by overlapping and size. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use that in my uh, foreground. So I'm going to draw a tree. There are many different ways to draw trees, but in general, trees are a little bit thicker at their trunk and they get skinnier as they move away from the ground. And I'm going to add a few branches now and feel free to draw a tree in the way that you like. Um, one way that I like to teach drawing trees is I'm, I use the letter V like that to create my branches. So this is my trunk. Um, my tree's extending up here. I want to add a branch that maybe goes this way. So I start with the letter V. And this is going to continue my tree, but this is where a, uh, a branch is going to start here. So I'm going to add, oh, it looks pretty, pretty tiny on there, but you can still see it. It's right there. And this is going to be a branch. And then my branch is going to split. As my branch splits, I'm going to draw the letter V again. There we go. And you can continue that. Um, you know, one thing to watch out for if, you're, if your tree branch starts to get larger um, when it should be getting skinnier, you may want to go back and try again. So, <clears throat> so even if you're working at home, um, actually, especially when I'm working at home, it's a great opportunity to cultivate a growth mindset and to be a problem solver. And I tell you guys this all the time that you're going to make mistakes in your drawing. So if I were drawing this on paper, I would be drawing really lightly and I would be mentally preparing myself to make mistakes. Because when I draw, especially on paper, I make a lot of mistakes. 
Um, so that might happen with you. That might be one place where you make a mistake is, is when you make your branches or add your details. All right, so there's one branch. Um, I'm gonna have uh, the middle of my tree part in two ways. I'm gonna use the letter V here. So this branch goes this way and this branch is gonna go that way. Good, you can see that. There's my letter V here. There we go. And then I'm not gonna draw all of the details on my branches because I want there to be some leaves and, and I wanna create a canopy here that covers up some of the sky. So I'm gonna use uh, broccoli leaves. <clears throat> so it looks kind of like this. It's just kind of repeating a curved line over and over again until it closes the shape. Um, feel free though to draw trees in the way that you would like to draw trees. So I know one of the resources I included um, shows you a few different ways to draw leaves, or if you know of a different way that you like to use, that's fine too. All right, so now for a, now time for my broccoli leaves here. I'm just gonna, I like to include some variety when I add my broccoli leaves. So maybe some of my curved lines are large, some are medium, and then some are small. Now my tree that's on my foreground um, is close to me. It's the closest thing in my, my drawing here. So I, I want to increase the, uh, the illusion that this is close to me. So I should be able to see some texture and detail on my tree and also on the ground here. So I'm first gonna erase my land lines, my middle ground and horizon line that go through my tree and I'm going to add some texture. One way to add texture is by repeating a line. So I'm just going to add a few lines here and there to show uh, what my tree feels like and you can use different lines to create your texture. I'm using a line like this and just repeating it. I'm making them larger here so that it's more visible for you guys but I'm just using a, a vertical line to show what the surface of my tree would feel like. It's not erasing very well. I have to make that a cloud or something. Um, but you can use angular lines, like these kind of look like rectangles. Um, you can use um, lines that have a little bit of a curve in them. So you can decide. What I would do though is, is stick with just one particular type of line and have that fill the shape of your tree in the foreground. And now I also need to add texture to my foreground ground. So like this little piece of land here, um, you can imagine for yours, what what is the surface of that ground feel like? And what is it made? Is this grass? Is it dirt? Is it sand? Is it rocks? Um, in my mind, I'm, I'm picturing some grass here. So I'm going to repeat this shape. Actually, this line, see how it's open? Um, so it's like, it's like the tip of an arrow, right? So I'm gonna add some, some grass texture here and I'm gonna make it kind of large. Yeah, you can see that good. And I'm gonna put it in the shape of my land too. And then one area where I wanna put it is right here. So this is just something I like to do where my tree meets my foreground line. I would imagine that there's probably some grass um, it's probably not like a really smooth transition into the earth here. So I want to erase this line and I'm again going to use overlapping just like I did with my tree and my other layers of space. There's going to be some blades of grass here in front of the trunk. There we go. That looks more realistic. And adding texture is something that you can really have fun with. You can really fill all the space here if you want to, but I'm gonna stop there so that I can start working on my middle ground. So I'd like to add a tree to my middle ground layer of space here, but I wanna show that this layer of space is a little bit further away. So I'm gonna add a tree just like this, but I'm gonna make it about half the size. And then I'm gonna do that again in my horizon line, and I'm gonna make it about half the size of the tree that I put here. So my trees are my details and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I'm adding one detail that's the same throughout all of my landscape, but if you want 
another one of your details to be maybe there's a person over here maybe there's a car and you want it to be a different detail here that's totally fine you're the artist you make the choices um, for this example though I'm just going to keep it super simple and repeat the same object as my detail in each layer of space all right so if my tree is about this big on my foreground I want to make it about half that size so it's going to be about this big and there's still going to be some overlapping here it's still going to overlap uh, my horizon line a little bit, but it's still going to be significantly smaller than, uh, than the tree in my foreground. So I'm using my letter V, adding some branches here. I'm going to add some texture onto my tree also, but my texture lines are going to be significantly smaller than these. You may not be able to tell because it looks far away, but um, the details I add here are going to be smaller. So they're really just going to look like dots. But I'm, I'm adding little lines that get smaller compared to my first tree. I'll add my broccoli leaves. You know, another thing you can do too in your landscape is you can incorporate some imaginary details. So if you wanted to add a, a castle or um, something from your favorite movie or create a theme with the details you add, um, you know, if that's what excites you about making your artwork, I hope that you go for it. All right, and I will add some texture too along my middle ground line, but it needs to be smaller than the textures I add on my foreground because again, artists are like magicians. Um, we're creating illusions, right? This, the visual illusion that um, this flat surface is actually layers of space that keep going back and further away and that um, these uh, layers of land have texture that you can, that you can feel. So I'm going to add some texture here. And it's just going to be smaller than the texture I put on my foreground. And that might be an area where you have to be a problem solver too. If you started making textures that were really small on your foreground and you get to your middle ground and your textures are bigger, you may have to do some problem solving here and come back to this area to make textures that are a little bit bigger so that these textures appear smaller. I'm going to add some texture in front of the tree here on the ground. And again, adding textures is, uh, you know, an area where you can get really carried away and have fun with filling um, these shapes with texture. I'm just going to spread them out a little bit for sake of brevity. I don't want uh, to, to use up all this video time um, by adding texture, but I just want you to see the difference in size of texture um, and the size of my trees. All right, now I'm going to add one more detail and that's going to be on my horizon line and I've got some space. Hmm, I think I want to add a little detail here and, and I'm going to make it about half of the size of this tree. Now the detail that you add doesn't have to be half uh, of the size of the detail on the middle ground line, um, but it should be smaller. Sometimes actually your, your background details will be so small that you won't actually see them. So um, that might be the case with yours. All right, so I'm going to add a tree here, and it's going to be just really, really small. It's going to look like a little, like a little piece of broccoli, really. I'm going to add a tree there. You know what? I'll add another one. Maybe I'll add another one over here. And these trees are going to be so far away that I'm, I'm actually not going to add any texture to my trees or to the land right below my horizon line. Um, what I will add, though, I'll add a little barn here. There we go, maybe I'll add a little bush here and there. All right, so I've got my three layers of space. I've got my horizon line. I've got my details with textures. Um, and I'm incorporating a lot of the things, uh, a lot of the ways outlined in, in one of the resources to create the illusion of space. So I'm using texture, I'm using overlapping, I'm using size. All right, so I'm gonna add some details in my sky next. and. As things get closer to your horizon line, as your details get closer to your horizon line, um, they're going to appear smaller. So my clouds up here are going to appear large, and then as they come down here, they're gonna get smaller. So I'm gonna add some big clouds up here. I'll add another one over here. Maybe it'll be, um, the tree will be overlapping my cloud here. And then I'm gonna add some clouds right here. This will be, 
Um, they'll be about medium sized, so a little bit smaller than these two clouds. And then if I add clouds close to my horizon line, they need to be pretty small. All right, lastly, I'm looking at my cloud and I'm looking at my tree and I'm noticing, I'm, I'm having to be a problem solver right now, I'm noticing that this cloud might look like it's part of my tree. It might look like my leaves are kind of kind of leaning over to the side there. So to separate my two shapes, one solution is I can add more texture in my leaves here. So I'm gonna do that by repeating this curved shape for the leaves. I'm just gonna spread them out a little bit. And I might have to be a problem solver again, you know, if I feel like these don't look right or if you know, I just don't really like the way that I'm adding texture here, I might have to erase them and try again. But I'm gonna see if this works, and I think it'll help my artwork and, and show my idea. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I feel like that separates the two shapes a little bit. Yeah, because this looks like an empty cloud shape, and, and the texture that I added inside my leaves, um, I think that separates those two shapes a little bit. All right, so that's it. I, I hope uh, this helps your landscape. I hope you guys work on your art skills um, and I hope you have fun. So stay tuned. Um, I'll be updating um, I'll be updating the Google Classrooms each Monday with new activities. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me or post on the Google Classroom. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, take care, guys. See you later. Bye.